Hello, my name is Dr. Basil Considine. I am here from the ACU Online Writing Center, and today we're going to do a webinar in the conflict management series, specifically writing about faith, law, and personal beliefs. Now, if you're not familiar with the Online Writing Center, we do work with students at many different stages in the process. You can come to us to webinars such as this. You can send us questions via email. You can make appointments to get feedback on your paper, either asynchronous, meaning you schedule time, upload a, a draft by that time, and we send you feedback generally within 24 hours. And also, if you have something where you'd just like to ask questions in real time, you can request a phone or Zoom appointment by sending an email to onlinewritingcenter at acu.edu. If you do that, I do recommend that you send a range of times in which you might be available because that will help us match you up with our staff's availability. We also have many resources, including paper templates, sample papers, blog posts, detailed guides, and a complete archive of webinar recordings at the Online Writing Center website. Again, the process, if you're making an asynchronous appointment, you want to go to our scheduling system, which is, happens to be WC Online, submit a paper uh, for your appointment by the time that your appointment comes around, and then we'll send you feedback. Here's a sample of some of the webinars we have coming up, but we have many more on the schedule. And uh, because this is a relatively new feature, I wanted to show you something about the website guide because we have added a new function where you can browse by your program. So he, I'm here on the Writing Center website where we have our archive page. Let's uh, actually, let's back up here. So if you just load the Writing Center website, you end up at this landing page and you can scroll around the links, but we actually just need to go to the navigation here. And if we go to services, writing webinars, you'll see the list of webinars for this term right at the top. And then at the bottom, we have an alphabetical listing of the full catalog. However, in the middle, if you are, say, in the CONR program, you can go ahead and select CONR here, and we will show you a number guide of all the courses for which we have webinars that align with particular elements in those courses. So we add these as the webinars are offered. So you will always find the latest greatest in this section, as well as in the other parts of this page. So it's a handy thing if you're just trying to cut to the chase and say, all right, I'm in Connor 602, what do you have for me right now? Uh, that's what this is for. You can also go and look ahead and see, is there a webinar for this assignment I have coming up so I can add that to my calendar? And with that, let us go back and dive into our main focus today. So we're going to talk about Connor 628's week one M1 assignment one, the legal definition of family assignment. We're going to talk about how to write about and cite and reference the required sources of information for this assignment. There are a lot. And we'll finish with a little bit of discussion of drafting and outlining. So let's dive in here. So this particular assignment is tied into a discussion post about family definitions and how they change. And it starts with a preamble. Assume you've been assigned the task of creating a statewide definition of family to align with changes in the law, as well as the changes you see around you in the community and society in general, and create and substantiate a definition to fulfill this task. So this is already requiring that you refer to Oh, changes that have taken place. So there'll be reference to some sort of literature, as well as describing things that you have observed. So you need to refer to your experience. This will involve I and my statements. And you're creating new meaning, a new definition to be applicable, a statewide definition. And if you're wondering, well, has the definition of family changed that much? I would say yes. Just in the last two decades, there's been substantial uh, shifts in how families applied in legal and other contexts. And uh, this can have significant ramifications 
in conflict management when you're dealing with people who consider someone inside their family and someone does not, or you are trying to understand who the stakeholders are in an argument. And more on that in the discussion boards, of course. Mm -hmm. So this assignment specifically asks you to respond to several prompts based on the week's readings and videos. So first, using the research you conducted in this related discussion question, uh, begin your paper with a summary of the definitions of family that best describe the secular, biblical, and legal perspectives. And you're supposed to provide one definition of each, so that's going to be three definitions total. And you're also tasked with creating a new statewide definition of family to align with the changes in the law and society, and then explain why that is a good definition or practical definition or however you choose to uh, make your argument there. Then you're also going to provide a personal opinion on whether your new definition aligns with your personal understanding of biblical principles. Now, this is something where they may be entirely in alignment, but chances are they aren't. You know, how we define family is one of those questions that is very broad. You know, are we going by genetics, marriage? Are we going by nuclear families? Are we going by larger social units? Um, it happens that my mother's side of the family is from Hawaii. In Hawaii, you will find many people who are addressed as uncle or auntie, not because they are blood relatives, but because they have a close relationship and that is something that they have chosen to take on and cultivate, develop over time. And how you weigh those things uh, can have very profound effects in different contexts. In a hospital in Hawaii, it would not be unusual for someone to come in and say, oh, I'm their auntie so-and-so. And they wouldn't check ID or ask questions or something like that to try and determine if they were blood relatives or something like that or relatives by marriage. But that's one particular context in one geography and how that understand that aligns with biblical principles. Yeah, you know, there are some people who say, oh, well, yes, the concept of the 12 tribes, these are, uh, the family may not be like, first cousin kind of relationship, but uh, we're all in this together. And there are other people who, for various reasons, want it to be more narrow or where insurance and it may have a particular practical effect as far as defining who is eligible for coverage and things like that. So your definition very likely will not entirely align with your personal understanding of biblical principles, and that's okay. Just give us your opinion and explain it in detail and tell us why or how it is the way that it is. Then there are a couple of specifications. This is going to be a Word document. So do use our APA course paper template. That'll save you a bit of time. That's going to be a, around 1,500 words. So 1,500 words is about six double-spaced pages using the templates. That's 12 point Times New Roman font, one inch margins, not counting the title page or the references. And uh, you're also told don't quote your sources. So no quotations for this one, but you are expected to be paraphrasing, summarizing, citing and referencing. So acknowledge your sources. And uh, again, use our APA course paper template. It will do much of the formatting for you and speed up how to do the rest. And let's take a look at that rubric there. All right, so if we look at the distribution of points here, there's 10% that's basically due to, uh, have you written a page, uh, sorry, have you written a paper of the appropriate length? Does it have all these elements? Does it look right? And the other 90% of the grade comes from the content have you done these things? Have you provided the def three definitions in appropriate detail? That's 40% of the grade. Have you given your own definition and stated, okay, why this is and how this is appropriate and how this aligns with today's society? It's gonna be 30% of your grade. Then another 20 is about your personal opinion. So keep this in mind because this doesn't matter as far as the proportions there. You know, with 
your personal opinion was just one short paragraph, that's probably not going to align with the you know 20 percent of your grade because 20 percent of six pages is about um, yeah, we'll say a page and a third and so in terms of plotting out how much time you're going to spend on this well you we can see just from doing some rough math that that suggests that things should be approximately x duration so um, if we're talking 30 percent of 30 points out of the 90 that are going for the contents that's roughly a third so roughly two pages going into the uh, student created and substantiated modern definition the second rubric item and then that would suggest that it'd be around three pages it is a little bit less but close to three pages for the student discussed definitions of family from secular, biblical, and legal perspectives. So you subtract a little bit for the introduction and stuff. So, you know, one paragraph introduction is probably just fine. Then you have around three pages for those definitions. So that's roughly a page each, two or three paragraphs. Uh, then we see, okay, well, so it's going to be uh, around another two pages for that modern definition. And uh, you know, somewhere around a page ish for the personal opinion part. So, again, uh, can these be slightly longer, slightly shorter? Yes, but that it tells you ballpark from the grading uh, roughly how long this should be, which is helpful for planning the level of detail. Okay, so let's talk about the different sources, and we're going to spend most of the rest of our time here. So. This uh, assignment requires that you use a variety of sources. Required reading, scholarly articles of your choice, and at least one federal or state source on the definition of family. All right, we're going to break these down in turn. And I'll say that if you don't have a copy of the APA 7th edition manual, there are many detailed examples and explanations online at the APA Style Central website. This is maintained by the American Psychological Association. It's a free resource. It's great for checking really quick to see where things are. are to, but there are more specific examples and more detailed explanations in the actual APA manual. And if you have a question, if you're not sure, you can always send us an email at onlinewritingcenter at acu.edu. All right, so first text up there is the Balswick and Balswick text, where we've got a certain set of page ranges to read for this module. Well, that's a two author book. Uh, in the reference section, you're going to include the information you see here, Balswick comma J period O period comma ampersand. So note that we have that comma and the ampersand separating the authors and that we've included their last names and their initials. 2014, that's the publication year. And then the title in sentence case, that's the family, a Christian perspective on the contemporary home, period. And then Baker Publishing Group is just the name of the publisher. And remember, no city and state. The city and state information was required in APA 6th edition. We're using APA 7th edition now, which doesn't include that because the publication industry has changed a bit. If you're citing it, Parenthetical, first author, ampersand, second author, comma, publication date. Balswick and Balswick, comma, 2014. If you are using it in a uh, introductory clause, like according to Balswick and Balswick, we follow uh, uh, the format here where the and is spelled out. And we have the date in parentheses. If you're using a signal phrase, Balswick and Balswick, parentheses, 2014, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you're just want to remind you that although I'm giving you the format for quotations, you should not be using quotes in this particular assignment. All right, so you're also asked to use a scholarly article of choice. And so you can go and find that at the ACU library. And uh, I've given you some examples for the reference and the um, citations. And let's go ahead and take a look there ourselves, because this is something where 
it's important to keep a couple things in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the library website again. All right, you should now be seeing the library website. And let's just do a search for definition of family. The reason I'm putting quotations around that is because I wanted to search for that exact phrase. If you are having trouble finding what you want, I would say try taking the quotation marks away or contacting our librarians. You can actually chat with them in real time and get help with the search. If you're not finding what you want. But uh, you know, I'm thinking about this and you know, I want a definition of family. I want it to be in the United States. I also want it to be from the last couple of years. Why the last couple of years? Well, it's more likely to be current, but also in my lifetime, there have been some fairly significant differences in how the federal government has defined some things related to family. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put on a full text search. I'm all because I only want to find results for things that I can read now. I'm going to select scholarly peer reviewed journals because I want it to be, be a rigorous scholarly article that will be meeting my professor's requirements for uh, scholarly literature that I can use. And I'm also going to change this to go from the last five years. So we find that there's still more than 2000 results. So there's a lot of stuff that I could potentially draw on. And you, know, you can look through and probably add some things that might make this um, more clear for and uh, more relevant for what you're doing. Uh, in this case, I see this article here from the Journal of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers. And I say, ooh, I think that is interesting. So if you decided that this was something that you were going to use, then you can save some time by using this site button here and then scroll down to APA. And um, you always want to check this because these are mostly populated by algorithms. And sometimes the algorithm doesn't quite get it right. So this is mostly correct. Uh, we have all the information in the right places, but in APA style, a journal article the title in your references should be given in sentence case. Now, this is proper noun. This is the name of the law. But this part here, response to the changing definition of family, that should actually be all lowercase. Now, you'll still save a whole lot of time by using the site button and then selecting copy and pasting into the reference list. You just want to make sure that you change this text to be all lowercase. All right. So let's head back to the slides now. So you're also required to use a federal or state website and the instructions suggested the US Census Bureau. Now, depending on what you're pulling from one of those websites, you might use different formats. So if it's just a web page, uh, so that doesn't really fit into another specific category, then you would cite it as you see here, U period, S period, Census Bureau, in period, D period, that means there's no date on that page. Subject definitions, that's the title of the web page in sentence case in italics, and then the link to the page itself. Now, if it's something that's like a report rather than just a simple web page, then you would go ahead and you would list the corporate author, whoever, whatever organization is listed as the author of it, or the individuals as the case may be. In this case, that's National Cancer Institute, the publication year, the title in italics for government reports. We also have in parentheses the report number, which is NIH publication number 18-2059. And then the name of the publisher, which in this case is the US Department of Health and Human Services, National Institutes of Health, and then the link to the resource. Now, this is something I frequently get questions about so let's go ahead and go back to the web browser and let's take a little look here. And let's say we are searching for Texas definition of marriage. I have no idea what will come up. Uh, we have a lawyer's website, which might be interesting, but probably not what we're going for. 
Dallas TX Divorce also might be interesting, but uh, perhaps not what we're looking for. Aha, marriage, the office of the attorney general. So that's an official government website for the state of Texas. Now, whether this uh, has the actual definition on it, not sure, but we'll find out. All right, so we have a variety of uh, statements on things here. Um, this is actually going back to 2015. And so is the commentary wording, the weighing in on things. Um, okay, you know what? This might take a little bit more searching than we're looking for. So let's add state of Texas. And uh, we could even go ahead and add texas.gov in here. And so that's a statement. Aha. This one here, this is a link to the law. So we've got uh, 84 RSR 1028. Uh, so actually this is a bill. So this is something that was proposed and not necessarily passed into law. So if we're looking for the legal code, well, let's just go down here. So this is the resolution itself. And somewhere on the Texas website, we should find a link to the legal code itself. Uh, let's see, legal code, Texas. See where we can, ah, Texas statutes here. So let's go with, um, hmm. should be a bit of searching here. Um, let us go with, for starters, Let's go to search here, search all codes and search for marriage. All right, so that you see that there are lots of places where it's mentioned. Uh, now, I would guess that there might be a definition definition of marriage in here. Uh, I'm re reminded that we're actually searching for family. So let's see. If we were looking at, um, let's see if this one has a reference. So if we do a worse search for family, ah, there's a family code. That might be more helpful. Aha, uh -huh, family code. So if we head to the family code here, let's see if they define uh, in family here. Well, we got a definition of marriage. Okay, except as provided here, the definitions in chapter 101. So this is one of those things where sometimes you end up with a lot of cross references. So let's see if we have family defined here. Uh, not in this section. All right, well, back to the family code. So you get the idea. It may take some looking around to see the specific thing that you're trying to find. But if you're going to cite this, we have a couple things that we want to be clear on. And uh, actually, if we go to APA style here, we have uh, some examples here. So if you're citing just a state website, so there are two ways to do it. There's a shorthand format for citing the laws themselves, but if you're doing a website, we're going to follow the this instruction here. Uh, when selecting a category, 
use the web pages and websites category only when a work does not fit better within another category. So if you see something and it's a report that contains the discussion, the, um, the definition that you're looking for, great. If it's, you know, you find it on one of these pages, you can cite it just as you would a website, a page on a website, which would be one of these as pertains. So for example, this one here, this basic format would work for many different things that you might find published on a state website. All right, back to the main thing here. Ah, there's a video. Now videos are a little interesting because it matters where they're published and how, and you'll see a couple different formats, but this is the one that follows the uh, clearest guidelines from APA 7 on this particular thing where we do happen to have the speaker identified. And then you end up citing that with the same author date format because there's not a publication date for this video. That's why we use the N period, D period. And then when you are citing your own perspectives, you don't include an entry in the references section because you probably haven't written books about these that other people can go and access. And so you make I and my statements to clarify that you are citing your own thoughts and beliefs. And I believe that my personal definition of family is, my composite definition of family includes. And then you also want to make sure that when you are giving your biblically informed perspective, that you follow suit and you clarify that. Now, something that is definitely related to writing about your personal beliefs is writing about your religious beliefs. And that this bringing us to the biblical perspective. And biblical perspectives, you know, you can be using the big B or small B here, but either way, we're talking about uh, perspectives informed in some way by the Christian Bible. And sometimes that is with layers of uh, interpretation on top that other people have provided. And sometimes we're talking about how you are reading the Bible yourself. And so we distinguish between these. If you're, you're referring to citing, relaying other people's interpretation, well, we'll just go ahead and cite that as you would any other source. So if you're referring to a video lecture, you just cite it as a video. If you're referring to a book chapter that someone wrote, you cite it as a book chapter, so on and so forth. Now, for if you're referencing the biblical text itself, well, let's uh, clarify that there are some things that have changed a little bit. Uh, one of these is that uh, APA 6 used a shorthand for citing the Bible and didn't require that you include a reference list. And uh, if we're doing full strict APA 7, then there's a little bit more detail that's required. Now, many professors are fine with the shorthand that you see here, but it's always good to check before you only put that in. The uh, more full version, and if you're referring to the Bible itself, you would have, um, you say, for example, in the King James Bible, and then for the date, you would have both the original date of publication and then the date of the version that you accessed um, and have a reference corresponding to that. Uh, now, again, you're not quoting in this assignment, so you shouldn't be quoting biblical verses here, but if you are just referring to it and not a particular uh, version here, you, you can say, okay, well, in uh, according to Second Peter 4, 3 to 4, and so forth. Okay, uh, we're going to wrap things up with a brief discussion of some drafting and outlining tips. And we've touched on these earlier, so it'll be a brief section. So before you begin, a couple tips. First, keep in mind how long the paper should end up. Again, 1,500 words is going to be about six double-spaced pages of content, not counting the title page, not counting your references pages. 
you want to start by answering each of the prompts directly and then filling in with additional detail and support. Make sure that you use the language of the prompts, especially in that initial answer to it, so that's clear that you're doing everything that you need to. And use consistent word choices to refer to the same things, which is to say, uh, don't start using another term for things because while it may be related, APA style is very literal. And if you say, okay, my perspective on the Bible is that, and then you say my insight, well, it could be referring to the same thing or it could be referring to different. And that lack of clarity is not helpful. So if you're talking about your perspective, let's always call it your perspective. And then as we talked about earlier, make sure to use the rubric and the instructions together to get an idea for the approximate headings and you should use to organize it and the approximate lengths of the section. And we'll finish by just uh, looking at that rubric again once. So 100 points total for this assignment, 10% of that is, okay, is it formatted in APA style? Is it the right length? Have you put in all the standard things? Irrespective of content. Now content, we've got 90 points in play and 40 points of those are going to go into your definitions of family. And so that's going to be approximately, you know, somewhere around two and a half to three pages of length for those definitions. So that's going to be, you know, probably something slightly under a page for each definition. A secular definition family is this, and then go into more detail. Okay, what, what are the implications of it being that way? Here's a biblical definition family. And what are the implications of that? Uh, legal, so on and so forth. Now, the student created and substantiated modern definition, that's going to be 30 points. That's a third of the points. Well, six pages of content, that's going to be roughly two pages is worth on your definition, of stating what it is, explaining what that means, uh, why you chose it, how is this important, why is it useful, all those things. And then the last, you know, the 20 points out of the 90. So this is going to be, you know, a little bit over a page, probably a not, uh, probably not two pages. So somewhere between one and two pages, uh, your personal opinion on if and how the newly created definition aligns with your personal understanding of biblical principles. Now you can reference other people's understanding if it aligns with you or if you're talking about how you diverge, but the focus should be on your personal understanding there. Throw in a brief introduction, brief conclusion, and that is six pages. You want to make sure you do everything that you need first by directly responding to these instructions and to the prompts. Um, and then if you happen to have additional information, then you can talk a little bit more about things. But I think with what you're tasked with doing, you'll be able to write six pages pretty easily. So focus on getting what you have to do first and then see if there's any available space. So I hope that was helpful today to talk through those things and to see those different examples of how the citation should look. And if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email at onlinewritingcenter at acu.edu or just schedule an appointment. And thank you for coming to this webinar. Have a good rest of your day.